Okay, kids, we are back. So we are joined today by Steve Rammel. And uh, Steve is actually not like a lot of the people we've talked to because he was never a player of mine or I never was one of his teachers. But he was actually my boss at West Florida Flames. And when he was the, the director of the club. Uh, and, um, and so we got to know each other. We worked together for a short time, but we got to know each other pretty well. And we've stayed in contact since then. But I want to tell you just a little bit about Steve, and then we'll, we'll talk with Steve and hear what he has to say. So Steve has been a player uh, and a coach and an administrator. Administrator means kind of like the principal is an administrator uh, as opposed to a teacher or a student. It's like the higher up person is what an administrator is. And he's done this in soccer, but he's also done this in other places, like uh, he's worked in a school district as an example. Uh, but uh, but to just stop to just say that Steve was a soccer player is is really unfair because he's done a lot of things in soccer. He uh, in the the soccer league that we're all familiar with is called the MLS. And when the MLS was first started, Steve was one of the first players in MLS and one of the first really good players in MLS. Uh, he went to a team called DC United and had a really good year and his first year there was considered a, or picked for an all-star uh, in the in the in the all-star game uh, I believe Steve has the distinction of having the first hat trick ever in the MLS I know it's at, the, at least at DC United and you guys know that a hat trick is when you score three goals in a game so that's a big thing and it will never be taken away uh, Steve also has played soccer in Germany and also for another MLS team, the Colorado Rapids, Steve has coached in college and at, uh, at the pro level uh, with the LA Galaxy and also at the youth level with Orlando City and also West Florida Flames. That's where we met. And I know a lot of your kids play for West Florida Flames. So Steve was also your boss at one time, if you want to think of it like that. Uh, so also Steve uh, has been involved with U.S. soccer. Uh, considered one of the best players in the country. Uh, so that is that is who Steve is. And so we're honored to have him with us. But Steve, I've given a, a basic introduction, but Steve, if you could talk a little bit about yourself. I, I'm sure I've left a lot of things out. Tell the kids about yourself. Well, I mean, I grew up in New Jersey, so a long distance uh, away from Florida. Um, and I traveled the world through soccer. And I've been fortunate enough to play soccer at the uh, international level with our youth national team. Uh, played college, uh, went to two two Final Fours at Rutgers. We lost in the national championship my senior year. Um, as you said before, I played in Germany. I played for our full national team for a little bit. Came back, uh, played in the MLS uh, for a couple of years. We won a championship with DC United, All Star. It was the first hat trick. Uh, matter of fact, I beat the person, uh, somebody the night, the next night, 24 hours later, uh, with the New York Metro Stars got the, the next hat trick. So I beat them by 24 hours. Wow. So I uh, just got in. Um, and, you know, like you said before, I've administered. I've been an assistant coach in the MLS. Uh, I've coached at UCLA, uh, St. Mary's College out in California. And soccer has been my life. Um, and currently right now I'm retired. Uh, from everything, retired from the sport, retired from administrating, and obviously tired, retired from uh, playing. Steve, uh, I think that's uh, it's awesome as I listen to you say all those things that you've been in all parts of our country plus internationally. That's given you a real flavor uh, of a lot of different cultures, which is which is cool. You bring a lot of uh, a lot of different perspectives. Uh, to the way you look at things. And that's one, I, one of the things, kids, that I want you guys to know is that I really have a lot of respect for Steve and I really enjoyed working for him. I think he's, one of the things I really like about Steve is that he asks a lot of questions and uh, that's kind of his leadership style. He asks questions, but he asks the right questions and he forces people to think. And that's a good thing. That's kind of the way I try to teach you guys. You guys might recognize that. Um, so, Steve, what do you remember what being 9, 10, 11 years old, what kind of a kid were you? I wanted to be outside. <laughs> I wanted to be around a sport, a ball, 
basketball, football, soccer, golf, baseball, hockey in New Jersey. The, the ice would freeze, so we play hockey. But I just wanted to be out, outdoors. I wanted to be active. And then I dreamed. I had goals. Just like all of your kids, somebody watching this wants to be a soccer player. Somebody watching this wants to be a school teacher. Somebody wants to be a business person, a doctor. Uh, but I had goals. And I think it's very, very important. Um, one of the things I'd like to pass on to anybody who want to listen is you have to have something that you're shooting for, whether it's to be the best student you can be, the best swimmer, the best person. You have to have goals. Uh, it gives you something to focus on. It gives you motivation. That's awesome. Steve, one of the things we did this year is we actually spent time talking about goals and we taught our we sort of uh, shared a five-step goal-setting process with the kids, and we went over it a lot with them. It was envision a goal, write it down, step two, tell a person, step three, formulate a strategy to reach your goal, step four, and then five, accomplish your goal, and then turn to the next one. How does that sound to you? It sounds good. Oh, well, uh, you asked me about nine, 10, 11, and 12 years old. When I was nine, 10, 11, and 12, all I dreamed of was being a professional soccer player, playing in Germany, playing at the highest level. And, and that was one of my main goals. I also wanted to be a good student, and I wanted to be an honest person. I don't know why I chose that, but I just wanted to be a good person. But going back to the soccer, I dreamed about it every day, every week, every month. And I know it sounds like, oh, no, you couldn't have done that. I did. It was something that I wanted to focus on. And I would, I would write it down. It would sit on a wall. But what I learned was that's my ultimate goal. You need short-term goals to get to your long-term goals. So if I wanted to be a professional soccer player and I'm 10 years old, well, how do I do that? So I had to sit down, and, and I learned this later on, but I had to have some short-term goals, work on some fitness, work on my finishing when I'm, I was a goal scorer, work on some weight training later on, not at their age, but later on, uh, making sure I was the best that I could be at my craft. I will give you a one of my last personal stories as a player. So when I found out I was going to go to the MLS um, and play for DC United, I sat down and said, okay, all your life you set goals. So let's not stop now. So I said, okay, before I start this MLS season, I want to do three things. I want to be, uh, I want to win a championship in my career in the MLS. I want to be at some point an all-star. And I said, and I want to do something, and I literally said this, I want to put something in the record books that can't be taken away. <laughs> and I literally said, I said, I want to be in the record books so somebody will remember me. Um, and in the first year, I did all three. We won a championship, I became an all-star, and I scored the first hat trick. Wow. Now the, now the lesson I would teach the kids is, all of a sudden I was like, okay, I accomplished everything, I'm done. And so you have this, you you actually have to reevaluate where you're at because I achieved it a little bit faster than I thought I was going to. I got lucky. You know, you get lucky sometimes, but I achieved it faster than I thought. So I had to really sit down and spend time reevaluating, setting new goals so I can get refocused because if you don't have something to shoot for, you're not going to be the best you can be. Steve, that's great stuff. Great stuff. Uh, before we move off this topic, and you were talking about that first year, tell us a little bit about your teammates, your coach, what it was like, the whole scene, MLS. T well, talk to us about that. It was the first year. It was 1996. So there was an electricity. There was an excitement. There was a, a strong interest in this professional league not only starting, but could it sustain itself, could it keep itself over time. And so... Um, Everywhere we went, you were. It was this newness. Um, there were large crowds. We played in front of sixty thousand, fifty thousand. Our home opener was in thirty, in front of thirty-six thousand. Um, the TV was very supportive. Um, the, what they did was because we didn't have the, the amount of teams in the league there are now. The teams were very competitive. You had you know, the sixteenth. If you carried eighteen players on your roster. The 18th player was very, very good because there were so many players that wanted to be in the league in these beginning stages. So there was always competition to play. There was always competition to start. Um, and you always had to look over your shoulder because somebody could replace you. To, uh, 
correct me if I'm wrong, but in that first year, you got the chance to meet lots of different people from different cultures in different countries. Is that right? It, well, that's the, that's the gift of soccer. The gift of soccer is it's an international sport. It's played around the world. So you're meeting people from various different cultures, various different backgrounds, different countries, South America, Asia, Europe, Africa. Um, and then having lived in Germany and lived in Europe uh, for a couple of years, you get to realize that the world is very small. And we're just one small speck in that world. And for example, children growing up in your school and going to school right now, some of them may not have left the state. But eventually we'll, they'll get out there and realize there's people just like them trying to do the exact same things that they're trying to do um, and trying to make their way in the world. Yeah, that's that's good wisdom. Uh, Steve, do you remember P.E. when you were younger? I remember P.E., one of my favorite classes. What, what do you remember about it? It was my escape. It was a way to take school. I love school, but it was a way to just to release some energy. Um, I also liked the newness of it. I was a soccer player. I was a baseball player. I was a golfer. And then I played some sports with my friends. But I was always looking forward to what are they going to introduce in the next class. I remember handball being one of my favorite. I, you know, I would never have played handball. And then all of a sudden, they introduced us to handball. And I, we did that for a few weeks. I'm like, when are we going to do this again? I want to keep playing handball played street hockey in there and so it was the newness and an escape to get out of school and to get some energy uh, out of my system because I was an active kid but it was the newness of, of doing things that I didn't I wouldn't normally do on my own and I was introduced to new sports and new activities I think PE is one of the really the hidden um, treasures of school and there's so much that can happen in PE and it's hard for a lot of the things uh, that you just mentioned to happen in any of the other classes, especially being outside and, and uh, moving around from different thing to different thing a lot. Um, but Steve, well, so, go my ahead. My son Sonza, is an active kid as well, and I don't think he'd thrive in school if it wasn't for PE. It's, it's, I think it's very difficult to sit in a class all day from 8 o'clock to 3 o'clock and to expect that you're going to be a hundred percent at eight that you can be the same at three o'clock and i think pe allows the kids to get up sweat a little bit run get blood flowing through their brain and their body and everywhere i wake i don't want to say wake them up but just allow them to let go of some energy that they need to let go of their kids they're growing they're active yes we have this saying at our school uh some everybody's good at something nobody's good at everything and Sometimes uh, PE can be a place where that's the best class for a particular individual, where that's the place where they can shine. Um, do you have any thoughts about that? Uh, well, I, the, the comment, I have conversations with my son all the time. I said, everybody has a gift. The challenge is knowing what you're good at, knowing what you're not good at. It doesn't mean if I'm not good at something, I shouldn't do it. But... If there's somewhere that you don't really have the motivation, don't really excel at it, put your energy towards the things that you might be good at. He's a swimmer. He's also a writer. He, the, he as a 12-year-old, writes very well. Well, try to find yourself in a situation where you can write a lot. Don't worry about the other stuff. Put yourself in a situation where you're playing to your strengths and develop them. And so I think if anything I've heard there, I think that for me is something that I, I've seen as a coach, as a player. You know, um, I was a forward. I scored goals. If somebody made me a defender, I would have failed. So hopefully the coach would put me in an environment, a place where I could succeed, and that was up front scoring goals. That's awesome. Now, Steve, I know you've seen a couple of clips of our kids warming up for PE class and also of our year-end uh, performance. Did that? What impressions do you have of what you saw? Well, some words came to mind. Energy, uh, excitement, uh, Focus, um, active, um, support, support from one student supporting the other. As I watched uh, some of the videos, um, parents supporting, the community supporting, teachers supporting. It should be. It seemed to be inclusive, meaning everybody was involved. Um, it seemed to speak that whether I was tall, short, 
fast or slow, everybody could participate. And we were in some level the same. Um, so when I saw it, I saw many, many positives. That's great. Uh, Steve, what do you think PE, you've got kids, of course, you've mentioned that. What do you think PE should be and what do you hope PE is in schools these days? Well, I think it can somewhat, on some level, replicate what sports brings to us. So how do I work within a team? How do I work with other individuals? This is important in life. How I work with others is going to be very important when I'm, when I'm 30 years old. I know some kids, we don't think about that. But sport allows us, PE allows us to work with other others, whether I get along with you or not. We may argue, but then how do we work together to be successful in what we're doing in this PE class? We're going to play a game. We're going to have a competition. We're going to be doing music and dancing and stretching. I'm doing something wrong. Does somebody yell at me? Or is somebody supporting me and say, no, don't do it like that. Do it like this. So how do we work together? How do we support each other? How do we work through challenges? Um, I would think are some big things that are very important. Those are some skills that, that are never going to, to not be used, are they? And I, I remember, Steve, one of the most impressive things when you were uh, our boss at the club was the way you pulled a number of coaches together. Well, there were several impressive things, but the way you pulled a number of coaches together, put them in a room and gave them a question, should we join this league or this league? Talk it over, you know, get in small groups. I want to hear what everybody has to say. And it was just those same skills, but being played out in the real world. You've worked in a lot of real world scenarios. Uh, do you ha talk about how important that is? My son, I mean, you know, obviously he's 12 years old. He has, you know, you have good days, you have bad days. And I tell him, I say, school isn't only about the academics. And when I hear you speak, this is what comes to mind. It's, I would say half of it is the social interaction. How do we get along with others? How do we learn to work with others? You're not in a bubble. You're not by yourself. So I have to learn to sometimes do what everybody else is doing. Sometimes I have to be an individual because that, and express myself within the rules because this is who I am as well. Um, so I hope that answers your question. No, that's great. That's great. There's no real wrong answer to that, but that's we talk about all those things. Steve, the last thing I'm going to ask you is um, you're, uh, occasionally I'll refer to the kids this way. I'll say future teachers of America or future coaches of America, you know, and then I'll say my point, whatever I want to say. So thinking of it that way, thinking that you're talking possibly to future teachers and coaches or leaders of any kind, is there any little piece of advice or two that you might want to leave with them as we uh, as we finish up our interview? Well, I'm trying to think of a couple of things we spoke about. I think one thing is to know who you are. Learn who you are. How do you function? Um, are you somebody that works well in big groups? Somebody that works better in smaller groups? What are your strengths? So learn who you are and what are your weaknesses. So try to figure out who you are and then as you do that start to move gravitate start to move towards the things that are going to express the best about you so if my strengths are um, I'm good at math well let's find ourselves in areas where we're challenging ourselves with math we're working with others but we're developing those math skills does that make sense makes a lot of sense to me Steve and I think that that echoes uh, some some different kinds of advice that I've heard throughout my life from people that I respect and that we try to tell the kids. Isn't it true that the more you're around, I really enjoyed um, your your explanation about how the world is really, in a, in a way, the world is really small in the sense that people are the same everywhere, aren't they? People, pe the principles of success are pretty much the same. And you kind of you kind of have hit on on uh, a couple of the key ones there. I'd like to add something about the music and PE. Uh, and it, when I saw the videos, it reminded me of a personal experience I went through with a young group of uh, kids. Um, and if I could just share it for a second. Sure, take your time. We've got all time. So I ended, as you mentioned in the uh, earlier, I played for Colorado Rapids, and after I 
was I left DC United, went to Colorado, and when I was out there, obviously when you're a professional soccer player, you work a few hours a day, and then you have the rest of the day to take care of yourself, weight training, whatnot. But you have a lot of time, so I ended up working with a young group of girls. They were 11 years old. They were for their age. They were the best in the state of Colorado in soccer, and the club asked me to coach them. And they said they're really talented. Um, and we think they can be special. So I said, okay. So I worked with them during this. I was their coach, worked with them for a while, and I had to take them to a pretty prestigious tournament in California in, over Thanksgiving. About 40 days before that tournament, we had a blizzard in Colorado. We're not in California. We had to travel there, and it snowed. So to make this story shorter, we lost fields for the rest of the time. We had no fields. Nothing. We couldn't get a gym. All they were all booked up with, with high schools and schools. We couldn't get an indoor complex. We had nothing. Wow. But I had to train these girls for 40 days. They had just finished the season. They were in great shape. I didn't want to lose that. So we found a church. And it was literally the, the area where they taught Sunday school. We cleared out all the chairs. And it was probably... I mean, a fraction the size of a, a gym. A fra I mean, it was so small, we probably had 30 feet by 30 feet. Wow. And so I'm sitting there going through, we're training them a, a four or five times a, a week, trying to get them ready for this event. We know it's not going to be the same as going outside. So they'll never get that outside on grass, actually doing the soccer that they're familiar with. So after about a week, I realized, I said, we need to do something. They need to do something while I'm losing them. Because every day you're in this in this space in a 20, 30 by area, pulling away chairs inside where they teach Sunday school. There was no, there was, it, it was, it was uh, I don't know if static's the right word, but it just wasn't flowing. We needed something. So we talked about music. <laughs> and I said, how about this? Our practices are for about an hour and 15 to an hour and a half. How about the thir first 30 minutes, we're going to do all technical stuff, but we're going to do it to music. You guys have to, get, you ladies have to get into a rhythm. And I said, you pick the music, I'll pick the technical stuff, and we'll put the two together, and you guys go off and, and we'll have some fun. It got them re-energized. It got them refocused. It motivated them. They were excited. They brought the radio they made their music. They would make up individual tapes. I had to eventually I had to pass it around. And say, okay, you two make me the music next time. You two, we would we would we would criticize or critique the music, saying, "Oh, that was good." <laughs> At the end, we had a lot of fun with it. The girls ended up having a great tournament. Nine months later, they won a national championship. Um, but it was just what I realized was the music gave them the rhythm, gave them some excitement, gave them something to look forward to. Um, so when I watch the videos that you're doing with PE, it reminded me back at that time, a year ago, uh, with a young group of girls who ended up being pretty successful. Well, Steve, that is that is such a good story. We, we really, you're talking about culture. You're talking about creating a culture within your team that uh, that has more that is about more than just, you know, the the drills, the strategies, and the tactics of playing soccer. It's a, it's the way that people interact. It's really all you had to work with. You, so you had to find a way to use that. We we really spend a lot of time on that at our uh, at our school, and every year we have a theme, uh, and um, you know we build around that theme, <clears throat> and we use the music uh, and the exercises and all of that to bring us back to that theme. Like the theme we just finished with was, it's not just the bricks, it's the mortar. And yeah. the, taking the whole year to make sure that, you know, it's not just a, a catchphrase you say one day and then, you don't, you know, you just don't come back to it. Everything right. keeps coming back to this general idea. What is the mortar? Who are the bricks? What are the bricks? What makes good mortar? What, what makes bad mortar? You know, is, you know, what things can you do to uh, strengthen mortar? Why is it important to have good mortar? You know, and, and all of that stuff. And you... Uh, you said some things in this interview that come right back to a lot of the things that we talked about this year uh, in that regard. And that story that you just told about those girls, I'm going to, without having been there, I'm going to guess that uh, 
they got as much or more out of the idea that you said, okay, girls, we're, uh, we're going to address this challenge a different way and we're going to do it together. Um, we're going to think differently about how we practice, including the inclusion of music, and I'm going to turn part of the planning over to you. That's all part of building culture. And I'll bet that carried on to the field with you in California. Well, it does. It created ownership. It, it develops character. It develops leadership. Um, whether they do right by it or do wrong, they're growing. Um, and they are then taking ownership in what's happening to them. And that's crucial. Yeah, I love that. Well, Steve, I love the fact that you took this time with us. Thank you. Thank and you. I appreciate it. And uh, I will... I will be in touch, and I'll stay in touch like I always do. Take care. That's good.